Um, the releasing or the discussion of releasing the data and the projections, he was pressed on that quite a bit. What do you yeah. make of his response and I guess in many ways what many would characterize as a non-response to that issue? Yeah, and it really sounds like what they're going to try and do this evening in that call with all the premiers is sort of everybody get on the same page. Uh, and if I'm reading between the lines, he's basically saying, look, I'm going to have a discussion with all the premiers, make sure that we're using all the same modeling um, formula and formats and make sure that when we do release it, that you're not going to be in Quebec and saying, oh, it doesn't look this way because it looks that way in Ontario uh, and making sure that everybody is releasing the same type of data. I know that Quebec just recently moved to uh, sort of putting everything into one category. In other words, if it was a suspected case of COVID-19, that they put it in the, uh, in the case, you know, that it was confirmed or that after it was, you know, presumed, I should say, not suspected. Once it was presumed that it was in the, in the column of, yes, that is COVID-19, and that's why they say the numbers seem to spike a little bit. Uh, interesting, though, in what he said, that, look, there's a number of different models out there that we could or may not present. One of them is where... Everybody gets better in a few weeks and we're all back to normal. And another one where, well, it's, you know, kind of like other countries. Didn't really mention the countries till later on, one like Italy, because everybody sees that one as the worst case scenario. Uh, and I think it goes back to that approach this government is trying to take, where they're trying to give information, enough information that will push people to listen to them at least, and that they'll stay inside, but not too much where it's doomsday and that people start to panic. And I think that is a calculation that this government uh, is very cognizant of and trying to make yeah. sure that if they go too big, and I mean, I think that was what Doug Ford said yesterday in his press conference was, we don't want people to panic. And he did mention yesterday, Ford did, that Ontario is trending and looking, getting dangerously close to those models in Spain and Italy. And I don't think the Prime Minister wants that kind of a panic either, although at some point he will have to release the numbers. Yeah, you got a sense, you got to have a sense that, you know, people already have that fear. You know, in Toronto, for example, they're pointing to New York as what Toronto could be, Canada's biggest city. So people more or less are taking these precautions more or less heeding the advice. You wonder if more information would be helpful. Uh, he says, look, I mean, people want to prepare. He acknowledges, at least, that people want to prepare for the worst. You wonder if the narrative will change and whether they will be now really forced. And he says more information will come. But, of course, you want consistent data, don't you? That's just it. And making sure that people are listening because of the data and that people aren't panicking because of the data. I think one good example is just behind me. You can't see it because that's Parliament Hill, but behind Parliament Hill is the Ottawa River. Behind the Ottawa River is Gatineau. So this is one of those rare places where you have uh, Quebec and Ontario so close together and you know major cities that are across from each other. Just yesterday around new, Gatineau police started doing these spot checks of anybody coming over the bridges going into Gatineau. And the reason is, is because the province of Quebec said, if you don't really have any essential business here, then we don't want you here. Uh, and not in a bad way, but essentially like, look, we're trying to self-isolate. And if you don't have to come here, then don't. Uh, I was speaking to, to somebody in government, in, in the Quebec government, and sort of asked them what's behind it. And they said, well, look, one of the issues that we have is that, especially in the Ottawa area, north of Ottawa, so that's eastern Quebec, it's cottage country. And much like in, you know, north of Toronto and in different places uh, across uh, the country, they don't want cottage country to be overwhelmed with people who are going to self-isolate there and then put a bigger strain on any system in case people get sick. Let's not forget, those hospitals in cottage country are not equipped to deal with a surge in COVID-19, you know, on the number of ventilators, the number of staff, potentially the number of masks. So that's one reason. The other reason is, and maybe a little lesser known, um, you know, to the outside of, uh, outside of Canada, but here, especially in Ottawa, uh, people go over to Gatineau, to the Costco's over there, because they sell beer in bulk. 
So uh, a number of people go over there, and that's when I was speaking to the official from the government, and they said, look, enough is enough. People need to stop coming over here to shop in bulk for these types of things. Uh, and they're sending a message uh, by doing that, checking people and making sure you're only coming over if you actually have business here. Uh, and the other thing is what Quebec is doing if they shut down shopping on Sundays, which is something that I think a lot of people will sit back and go, okay, that doesn't seem so bad, but there has been a rush on grocery stores in Quebec as a result. But it wasn't that long ago, I would say roughly 30 years ago, that there was no shopping on Sundays in Quebec. And so it's kind of a you know, little back to the future moment where people have to get used to that. But it's specifically because, as Prime Minister Trudeau was saying, people don't seem to be listening. They are still going out. They are still making multiple trips as they go to the grocery stores and saying, I didn't get this at this one, I gotta go to another one. And essentially trying to hammer that message home again today saying, one trip per week, please think about this, folks. Uh, it applies to everybody out there. And I think that governments are going to have to try and manage this. And it goes back to what your point was on the messaging. Do we need, or does this government need to come out and say, this is the reality, folks. If you don't do this, well, then it's going to be uh, like Italy. And nobody wants Italy. So smarten up and stay home. It might have to get to that point, Anthony. And he was also asked, the Prime Minister was asked about personal protective equipment and, you know, about the reports that some of the provinces are saying, look, this was supposed to come to us, the United States, some states, you know, took it, they're just paying more for it. Um, yeah. What have we learned on that front? What do you make of uh, his response? Well, his response was, we'll check into that. We've heard those reports as well. So obviously concerning to the government and because they're trying to procure their own things. Also, he kind of made that turn and said, look, that's why we are doing our best to work with Canadian companies. We're hearing upwards of 3,000 Canadian companies in industries are working with the Canadian government to try and manufacture some of these things. He actually underlined Bauer, calling it the quintessential Canadian story, the hockey company that's making face shields. Uh, and they're really trying to make that the focus here and saying any company that can help. You've seen the, um, the, the Auto Parts Manufacturers uh, Association last week partnered with the Ontario government and said, look, we're going to retool some of our factories and start to help to make ventilators in the same way that GM was forced to do it in the U.S. Um, and so he's really saying, look, we're going to, the Prime Minister is saying, we're trying to make sure that we can make these all within our borders, all within Canada, so we don't have those types of scenarios that may or may not be playing out. As he said, he's going to check on those reports. Um, but that is why they're trying to make sure that they do everything here. He also mentioned that uh, Hamil Hamilton Warehouse has just received a million masks uh, that health officials are now going through to make sure that they're all still good and they still can be used. Uh, and I think he's trying to reassure people in the healthcare industry and saying, he said that adds to the 10 million masks that we've gotten over the last few days. And so I think, again, let's bring it back to that conversation that they're going to have tonight with all the premiers, sort of an assessment of where are we on our, all, all the, the PPE, the personal protective equipment, and where can we distribute them? How can we make sure that everybody right. has enough? And then try and get that message out to people because the message that we've been hearing from healthcare workers on the front lines, they don't have it. Uh, or, you know, the union is saying it's behind lock and key and people are being rationed uh, PPEs. And that is not what this government wants to get out there. They want to say, even though Patty Haidu, the health minister yesterday, said successive federal governments have not been stockpiling this stuff, I think they're trying to get ahead of it and trying to say, look, we're going to have enough for everybody so that uh, frontline health care workers shouldn't, shouldn't worry all that much. Yeah, there's no question a massive mobilization underway. Provinces just hoping that it gets to them uh, quickly. Uh, of course, uh, many issues on that. Mike, we'll have to leave it there for now. Let's stay in Ottawa and bring in Mercedes. And, and Mercedes, you get a sense, you know, some of the, the talk, he's almost echoing some of the messaging from his wartime predecessors because, you know, effectively we are kind of in a war uh, of a different kind. People in the fight of their lives and we're all effectively in the fight for our way of life um, and saying more or less that it's really up to us calling us to duty and really, this is in the fight of our lives, isn't it? 
Yeah, and it's it's interesting because you have seen in many countries wartime powers essentially being used, but they're being used for a pandemic. The military scaling up has used the term. They're going on to a war footing. Uh, everyone's seeing this virus as the enemy, and, and those kinds of sort of images are helpful for people when they're thinking about uh, something that is invisible. Uh, it's not like a war where you can see your enemy or you know where they are. Uh, this virus is everywhere. It's among us. Uh, and so in that sense, it's really interesting to hear those words being used and they're, they're trying to shape that response and to get that social social cohesiveness uh, to nudge people's behavior in a certain direction but the government's also taking a lot of criticism as you were mentioning for not releasing the modeling that shows the best and worst case scenarios what the prime minister said today is essentially they do have modeling it seems like they're still looking at it and talking to the provinces because some of this is coming from the regions but he won't really give a reason on why they won't release that in the way that other countries have uh, New Zealand has released their modeling. The United States has released their modeling. Um, and we don't know in Canada what's the best case scenario and the worst case scenario. And uh, that is something planners have. They have to have it because that's how they determine what needs to be done in terms of policy, in terms of uh, what they're telling people to stay home, how serious the mechanisms need to be in terms of enforcing those policies that they are introducing, and as well for healthcare planning. So it, it's sort of really interesting that he, he's saying eventually it's gonna come out, he's been saying this for a week, but there's certainly growing frustration and some experts say they think it could really help with behavior if people could see, look, if you do the best end scenario, things will actually not be that bad. If you do the worst case today, he indicated it could be as bad as places like Italy, uh, where it is it looks like a war zone, literally. So we'll see if that um, modeling is forthcoming after his conversation with the provinces. British Columbia, uh, by the way, Anthony, has has released their modeling. And speaking of British Columbia, I, this province is probably the closest of all of them in terms of flattening the curve. I mean, nowhere near out of the woods yet, but at least leaning in that direction, isn't it? Well, I know I, I, I can't say specifically where they're at compared to the other provinces because we don't know, right? This is one of the difficulties. We that they, they seem to be happy with the way things are trending, and, and overall, we're hearing people saying, you know, keep doing what you're doing, keep listening. If you're not listening, start listening. It can work. Um, but we we don't have comparison points, and that's one of the challenges. Um, we don't know what the government is expecting, and and there's that flattening the curve aspect, but the modeling is not actually reflective of that. Modeling shows best to worst case scenarios. So unless you're only showing the best case, then that's the only reason you need to wait and see. How how things are working. They have to figure out exactly how bad it could get or hopefully how good it could get. Um, and, and those models are done for healthcare, the military, for other planning purposes. And they're done independent of whether or not people are complying. Because the worst case scenario is if people are not complying, the best case is if they are. So it's not actually reliant on our behavior. What is reliant on our behavior is flattening the curve. We do control what scenario comes out of that, but our behavior doesn't control what the modeling reflects. Yeah, the bottom line is there is so much we don't know. His message, you can serve your country by staying home. Of course, a lot of people are doing just that. Mercedes, thank you so much for all of your insight today. All right, that's Mercedes Stevenson in Ottawa.